Warning. The content of this show is the sole opinion of Dave's and guest, if any, and is not intended to ruffle your feathers. It is encouraged, however, that you leave a comment with a list of your own so that you may share your input on the topic. Any comment containing sour grapes will be deleted. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we have two guests on the list. The show today is going to highlight 1986. 1986 was the year I graduated high school. It is also the year these two gentlemen graduated high school. Welcome, Mike Flanagan and Hello. Krellbar. Howdy, folks. The 86 All right. boys. How about they that? are. The class of 86. Yeah. Scary. Yeah. I remember it very well. My senior year was obviously 85, 86, but 86 was a great year. Great year for music. One of my favorites. I'm going to kick off the list, guys, if you don't mind. Yeah, let's I'm going it. to start with my number 10, and my number 10 is Luther Vandross, Give Me the Reason. This album, phenomenal. Paul Jackson Jr. on guitar, just great. Marcus Miller on bass. I love this record. My favorite song on this album was Because It's Really Love. And um, this was one of the sexy albums of 1986. That is my number 10. That's a good, that's a good one there. I'm, I have to be honest with you. I'm surprised. I, I don't know why. I just, I just am. I didn't expect that out of the gate. I couldn't tell you anything off that album. <laughs> yeah. I was pretty sheltered. <laughs> uh, I'll give you my number 10. My number 10 is four Huey Lewis in the news. And I think that probably um, uh, aside from, you know, some of the hits were really good. It, it, there's a couple of hits that are like, okay, you know, like hip to be square is a little, um, but forest for the trees, probably my favorite tune on the record. I also really enjoy Jacob's Ladder. I'd have to listen to that record maybe step by step, rung by rung. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay, my number 10 is It's a Kind of Magic by Queen. Um, solid. It's a solid album. It, there, there are some wobbly moments because it is, you know, considered partially a soundtrack. Soundtrack, yeah. And stuff, but I tell you, my favorite tune on that carries the album, and that's Who Wants to Live Forever. That, that is such an excellent song. And I mean, uh, as far as other songs, I mean, Friends Will Be Friends is a strong one. Uh, oh, uh, Just One Year of Love. Um, Freddie's voice on that is just amazing. I like the opening track, that's One it. Vision. Gimme, yes. gimme, gimme fried chicken is the last, <laughs> last line. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Number nine is a quick backstory, and I'm known for long-winded stories. This shouldn't be too long. In 1990, I discovered this album. A friend of mine, Brian, came to a party once and said, Jim, you got to check this out. And it was an album called Inside Out by a Chick Corea electric band. And he says, this guitar player, Frank Gambale. You got, and I was familiar with them from guitar play. So I listened to it. I said, oh, this is who this is. And it's like, so I did a little digging. And the first album, Chick Corea Electric Band. And the first track I heard off of that was Got a Match. And I was hooked. So my number nine is Chick Corea Electric Band, eponymous album. Uh, Got a Match is a good one. Um, a Rumble is another one uh there are some dated sounds on there like on india town and uh no zone they have this uh this sound like a reverse the uh, water drop or something that they use a little too extensively and stuff but just hardcore fusion and uh that that's the original lineup with scott henderson uh john patushi uh dave weckle and chick korea and also carlos rios was on there. 
Very cool. Inside Out, I loved that record, although I really enjoyed the acoustic band more than the electric band. Mm -hmm. But I did dig Inside Out a lot. My number nine is going to be no surprise. It is an album called Victoria Land by Cocteau Twins. And uh, the song Whale's Tales is phenomenal. I mean, the whole record is just really, really great. This is a go-to-bed album. Usually the band has electronic drumming and whatnot, but there's none of that on this record. This is really like one lullaby after another. It's a great record to go to sleep. If you're an insomniac, Cocteau Twins Victoria Land. I want to go ahead and point out that I called that on one of the uh, chats last week. What did you say? It was going to be a new top 10. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I think that Krell said it too, I think. Did you? No, yeah. no I didn't. I, I, there are a couple others that I said would be. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. So my number nine, by the way, I, I, I should mention that my numbers four through 10 or 10 through four, however you want to look at it, are in no particular order. But my top three are my solid top three, one, two, three. So my number nine is So by Peter Gabriel. I love, love this record. Um, I love Red Rain. I love, I, and still to this, it, it was probably years that uh, we ended every acoustic duo show with In Your Eyes. I love this record. And what more can you say about it? So, Peter Gabriel, my number nine. Great record. Mm. Yep. My number eight. This is one that uh, in one of the chats, I, I think that you, uh, you guessed this would be in my top 10 is Invisible Touch by Genesis. And my absolute favorite song on this is Throwing It All Away. I love it. Um, oh, it's also got Tonight, Tonight, Tonight. Invisible Touch is a good song. Um, I love the record. Love it. My number eight, Solid Eight, Invisible Touch. That's my favorite song on that album. Which Throwing one? Throwing It All Away. Yeah, Absolutely. Not a favorite record of mine. Yeah. I, yeah, I, th I think you said that in the chat, too. <laughs> Throwing it all away is, uh, it's, it's actually, Great a, song. A, yeah, it's a song that, um, uh, that, that we've done, and it is, it's a challenge to sing that song. Very much so. It, it, took, it, it took a little bit for me to get it. it difficult. Okay, my number eight needs no introduction. It's... Uh, Rockin' album, and it's by um, Tesla, Mechanical Resonance. You know, when that came out, I just thought it was a great rock album. I think the only drawback of it is that the kitschy titles on the back, like Easy Come, Easy Go, you know, Too Late Full Love and Used Numbers and all these cutesy spellings, I thought that was a little off. Uh, my favorite song on the album is Changes. I always loved that song. But, you know, this several strong great songs on it modern day cowboy little susie that cover by phd mm -hmm. uh, getting better just great great rock and roll album and i saw them open up for david lee roth on the eat em and smile tour and they just kicked ass excellent i gave that a listen not two hours ago mm -hmm. not the whole thing through but a few of the mm -hmm. songs i skimmed through it yeah Good one. My number eight, I'm just going to come right out with it, is Toto Fahrenheit. Love this album. Great record. Uh, to me, this is like one of the, besides the first album, it's one of the most solid Toto albums in the catalog. And uh, there's so many great songs on it. I really like Without Your Love. I like I'll Be Over You. My and uh, yeah, and just, and everything else on the record is just great. I, I love Joe Williams. This was Joe Williams' first album with the band. Just great. Yeah, that was an album I was not familiar with, though I am very familiar with the single uh, I'll Be Over You. That's, yeah. So, Without I Your mean, Love was also a big hit, an mm -hmm. MTV hit. And that's one I have to revisit. Yeah. And I always dug till the end. That was a great song. My number seven is an early album by this band. They changed their sound quite considerably as time kept going. 
However, this album I effing loved. The band is Fishbone. The album is In Your Face. Charlie had a date. Um, just great. Great record. Love it all. I love every song on this record. When Problems Arise, the bass line in there, just killing it. I'm not familiar with it. I'm very familiar with Fishbone. I never got the albums and stuff. I've heard songs there and there. I, I've seen them and I've heard great stuff from them when my friends played them. And But when I was going through the whole albums of night, I know you're a huge Fishbone fan, Dave, and I knew that would be on your list. Oh, yeah. I think one of the cool things about doing this is I get uh, ideas uh, for music that I should listen to. And that's fantastic. So my number seven, um, back in the high life, Steve Winwood. I love this record. Mm. I love Steve Winwood. Um, amazing voice. I, you know, I like uh, the hits are, 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 are fantastic. Finer things. I love that song. Um, solid for me. Gr great record. I remember this came out in the summer of 86, right around the time Soul came out. And uh, with Chaka Khan on Back in the High Life, just a, a great record all around. Yep. Yeah, my favorite on there is the title track. And my my second favorite is actually Split Decision. I love that song with great Joe song. Walsh. Mm. Yep. My number seven is a band called Talk Talk, Color of Spring. No surprises there to people that know that I was a fan of Talk Talk. I mean, it's it, it's a foreshadowing of the albums that was going to come out that, um, you know, like uh, Spirit of Eden. You know, there are some brooding songs on there, but they, this has more elements of their pop. It was like a transition from It's My Life and The Party's Over into the next Laughing Stock and Spirit of Eden uh, era. And, uh, yeah, my favorite song on there, it's, it was difficult to – because it bangs off with four great songs, but I mean, life's what you make it is uh, my favorite. I mean, there's other songs. I don't believe in you. April 5th, uh, living in another world, living in another world could very be my first as well. <laughs> it's, it, it's a great listen. Uh, Mark Hollis's voice. I always love Mark Hollis's voice. And if anyone doesn't know that album, definitely go and, just listen to it. So, my number six is an album that I'm sure neither one of you've listened to before. It has Robert Fripp on guitar, it has Bill Nelson on guitar, Steve Jansen on drums, who's one of my favorites. And the album is actually by his brother, David Sylvian. The album is Gone to Earth. One of my all time favorite records. Um, I can't say enough good about this album. It's very ambient. So if it's ambient is in your flavor and you want to check out something different, David Sylvie and Gone to Earth, my number six. My favorite track on the album is The Healing Place. My number six, Crowded House. This is uh, one of those soundtrack of the 80s kind of a record, right? Um, and just brings you right back when you hear songs and, and obviously the, the big hits, Don't Dream It's Over, Something So Strong. Um, great songs, great yeah. songs. Love Neil Finn. I actually um, uh, would prefer the band with, uh, with the other members, but, um, but he, he, I think he did a nice job in Fleetwood Mac too. Um, and I think that uh, he, he did uh, Don't Dream It's Over, I believe, in the Fleetwood Mac set. Um, him and Stevie Nicks, that's that pretty cool. Nice. Yep. Uh, okay, let the metal begin. Uh, peace sells, but who's buying? Megadeth. <laughs> it's like uh, my favorite track on there is probably Wake Up Dead. That's the first track on the album. They used to be the theme song to uh, Headbangers Ball, and there's so many transitions in there and stuff. That's the title track, and uh, there's also um, – Oh, I, geez, if I have to name my favorites and stuff, I got to go through. The, 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 the. My Last Words is an excellent song. That's That could probably be my number two or three. But they, there's that cover of um, Ain't Superstitious as well. That's pretty good. 
and uh, Devil's Island, Good Morning, Black Friday. I mean, very strong metal album. I am always was a fan with Chris Poland as the guitar player. That was Chris Poland's last album. And uh, yeah, that just killer metal album with killer riffs and just I listened to it the other day again and still rocks. I always liked Megadeth. I will say this. It my love for Megadeth didn't kick in until Rust in Peace when mm-hmm. it was like, oh. Before that I thought it was good, but I wasn't gaga. But I, I when when Rust in Peace came out, I was like, oh hello. Rust in Peace is my favorite Megadeth album. Yeah. Uh, my number five is Master of Puppets. Now, in the grand scheme of thing, I like Megadeth better than Metallica. But this year, this album hit me hard, and I just love this album. I know you're not the biggest fan of this one, Dave, but it's uh, it's it just you know Sanitarium, the title track, and my favorite song on it is Battery. I mean, that that is just so in your face, and that riff is just impossible. I mean, the James James Hetfield's right hand is just insane. And every time I listen to it, it's like it just gets me fired up, and I never get sick of it. Hmm. Excellent. So my number five, and again, I think we're going to be in a little bit of left field for you guys. My number five's an album by the band The The. The album is Infected. Songs like Heartland, Sweet Bird of Truth, Slow Train to Dawn, the the title track Infected. Everything on this album is fantastic. The band is awesome. I love Matt Johnson. I love The The, and this album is my fifth favorite of 1986. All right, my number five. It's Can't Hold Back by Eddie Money. I am a big Eddie Money fan. Love Eddie Money. I saw him, I can't even tell you how many times over the years. I saw him a couple months before he passed away. Um, Endless Nights on that. Take Me Home Tonight, of course, is the, the big hit from that. Um, I Want to Go Back is on this record. Uh, and I think almost all of the sort of, you might call them filler songs. If you're not an Eddie Money fan, I am a fan of all of them. I love this album. Love it. And my number four, although we have spoken about this artist quite a bit and we do not appreciate the live show, shall we say, <laughs> Eat Him and Smile, David Lee Roth. Yeah, you know, Steve Vai, Billy Sheehan. Um, you know, I, I love this. I love this record. Um, Yankee Rose, right? What else is on that one? Um, Tobacco Road. Um, the Billy Sheehan yeah. song, Shy Boy, right? Yeah, Big Trouble Love is it. great on there. Uh, Love it. And I, as Dave knows, I don't know if you, if you know Crow, you probably do. I lean more toward the songwriting and the actual musicianship of Sammy Hagar, his voice, um, mm. when it comes to Van Halen, which is blasphemous for so many people. I think David Lee Roth... Uh, I just will never get the, 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 the picture of him riding an inflatable microphone around the arena I, and, and forgetting all the words to everything. I just, was... Sammy Hagar was my guy, but Eat Him and Smile, great record. That's my number four. My number four is Iron Maiden, Somewhere in Time. Uh, no introduction needed. Uh, the title track, Somewhere in Time, Wasted Years, Sea of Madness, Heaven Can Wait. Uh, Stranger in a Strange Land, Loneliness of a Long Distance Runner. I mean, I remember when the album first came out, it was a little bit of a letdown. I remember, you know, because they were using the guitar synthesizers and immediately, you know, people kind of pan the album. But upon many listens, it is just an awesome album. Uh, you know, Fantastic. My, my favorite song on that would probably be uh, Stranger in a Strange Land. Um Somewhere in time, probably be my number two because I remember when that first came out, it starts off with the guitars and it builds up and then it's a chugging like Iron Maiden, then it kicks into that other gear and it's like, okay, well, we're rolling. Yeah, a great record, phenomenal record. 
My number four is also a metal album. It's one of two metal albums by this band that I like, or I should say that I love. Mine is Queensryche Rage for Order. Um, I love this record. Screaming in Digital, Neu Regal, uh, Walk in the Shadows. This album and The Warning for me were the two Queensryche albums that I really liked. You know, after when they did Mind Crime and Empire, mm, it got a little sassy to me. But Rage for Order will always be a top dog album for me. I loved it. I listened to it a billion times. It reminds me of the fall of 86. So, Yeah, I saw that tour. Uh, they opened for uh, Ozzy when I went to go see him on the Ultimate Sin tour. Nice. My number three album, again, I feel like I'm out in left field here, hanging it with you guys not knowing any of these albums, is The Smiths, The Queen is Dead. I love this record. Um, I know it's over. There's a light that never goes out. Um, some girls are bigger than others. I just love this record. Um I love every album by the Smiths. I think they never put out a bad song or a bad record. And uh, this is my third favorite from 1986. So as I, uh, as I said, the four through 10 or 10 down to four, we're in no particular order. Um, these now are my uh, top three, 86. And I think that um, maybe number three and two, you could, you could, call them both two. They're ties, right? Uh, but my number three, because you have to number it, is The Way It Is by Bruce Hornsby and The Range. To me, this is a perfect album. And I mean, every single song is awesome on this record to me. My favorite is not one of the hits. Um, my favorite on the record is called Down the Road Tonight. Fantastic. Um, I like The Way It Is. It's great. Of course, Mandolin Rain, uh, another hit. Uh, off that record, the whole thing is absolutely phenomenal. I love it. I love the musicianship. The only issue with this record is it's one of those that I like to listen to once and put away for a while. Um, and I, I, I don't know why that is. I, 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 th I get the feeling when I listen to it that if I listen to it repeatedly, I would lose it for a long time, if that makes sense. But to me, number three, the way it is, Bruce Owens being the range, a perfect record. My number three is I discovered this again. This is around 1990, uh, and a singer in a band that I was helping do lights for. Uh, he uh, turned me on to XTC, and uh, it, it was Dear God, which doesn't appear on the album, but it was added to later releases and stuff. I always consider it part of this album, but the album is XTC Skylarking. It's a great listen from beginning to end. There are no weak areas at all, and it's just adventurous. I mean, songs like Mermaid Smiles, uh, Thousand Umbrellas. Uh, the Man Who Sailed Around His Soul is probably my favorite song on it. it could be A Thousand Umbrellas, could be Grass. It's it, Naming a number one is difficult. On it's there. funny because... Uh, Andy Partridge, I always think every song I've ever heard from him is always interesting, mm. but I've never delved into his catalog. Neither have I. That's the interesting thing is that I discovered this album, but I am by no means like, oh, I'm totally into his whole and catalog and stuff. It's just this album stuck with me. Okay. My number two is Back in the High Life, Steve Winwood. Wow. I mean, you couldn't, you couldn't escape this album. This album and my number one were on the same cassette, and I'd flip it over and listen to it constantly. My favorite song is the title track. Oddly enough, uh, Mike mentioned uh, Finer Things. That's actually one of my – that's probably my next to the last song. I mean, uh, My Love's Leaving is probably my uh, least favorite. Uh, but I mean, they're all great songs. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but, but like I said before, 
split decision is very strong. I mean, that, that could have been my favorite, but it's back in the high life just elicits an emotion in me when I <clears throat> listen to it. it. It just, you know, they, it's those songs that aren't sad that can elicit emotion. It, it just makes you feel so good when you listen to it, like higher love and even finer things to some extent. It's like it makes you feel up in a good way. So my number two is a jazz record featuring Steve Gadd on drums and Marcus Miller on bass. The album is called Double Vision, and it's by Bob James and David Sanborn. This album is a perfect record in my eyes. The producer, I think it's Tommy LaPuma is how you pronounce his name, also produced one of my favorite Bill Evans records, You Must Believe in Spring. The recording is lush. Every song on it is fantastic. My favorite tracks, the title track, Maputo, written by Marcus Miller. And I also really love their version of You Don't Know Me, which was the old Cindy Walker and Eddie Arnold song. Mm -hmm. Also, Al Jarreau guest sings on the track Since I Fell For You, which is the old Lenny Welch song. Well, I don't think Lenny wrote it. It's Buddy something, but... A phenomenal album. If you've never heard it, I urge you to listen to it. My number two, um, we talked about the David Lee Roth, Sammy Hagar thing. It's 5150 for me. Um, a perfect record if you take Get Up off of it. I don't like that. <laughs> um, what more can I say about that? 5150. I will say this. I remember distinctly the first time I heard um why can't this be love i was delivering pizza for a place in cranston and i uh they they provided a car and uh it had a good stereo in it and the new van halen track is coming on and i heard it and i didn't like it i thought oh what is what the hell is this it's all keyboards man i oh uh listen to it two more times love it absolutely love it 5150 my number two Produced by Mick Jones of Foreigner. Yep. Yep. It was. So my number one, Dave, I know you know this, what it is. Hey, Krell, you might too. Mm. To me, um, absolutely. It's, it's funny that we picked, uh, that we did 1981 prior. So this band had a record then. And this band was also my number one. And in 86, different flavor. You know, they go a different way. I wasn't happy that they uh, got rid of the uh, rhythm section for this record. Um, I was a big Steve Smith uh, fan. I love Ross Valerie. Of course, it's Journey. Raised on Radio is my number one. There is a weak track on it, though. I'm, I'm, I'm not um, a big fan of Once You Love Somebody. But my favorite song off this record is not one of the five or six singles they released. My favorite song is called It Could Have Been You. Uh, but I love tunes like Girl Can't Help It. I love, uh, you know, Raised on Radio. I love this record. It's my absolute favorite. No, hands down, no question about it. My number one for 1986. By the way, saw them at the Civic Center on my birthday that year. I'll be all right without you. a great tune. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I'd say, per- you know, it's yeah. more R and B. You know, it's 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 not uh, it's certainly not Escape or Frontiers, um, but I think that uh, Neil Sean um, does so, so. His guitar work in this is fantastic. I think some some of the solos in this are just my favorites. It's fantastic. Love it. Okay, so <clears throat> my number one is so Peter Gabriel. No surprises there to anyone who hangs in the chats. Uh, I mean, I've said this a few times. Uh, my favorite, it, I mean, seems like a stock go-to thing, but In Your Eyes is, it always will be my favorite song on that album. My second will probably be Red Ring. Uh, the hits kind of rank a little low. I think Sledgeham is a great song the first million times I heard it, but I still think it's a great song. Uh, things like Big Time kind of rank low on me because i'm not a fan of like the chorus but you know the um the verses and the bridge before the chorus i think are stronger than the chorus itself when it builds up 
Uh, I think it's very strong there. And then the payoff doesn't really get that. But it's still a great song. Don't get me wrong. Um, yeah, my favorite's In Your Eyes. And great Excellent. album through and through. Great the choice. Everything. Yeah. I would say that's a phenomenal record. In sure fact, is. it's not only fantastic, it's no also way. my number one. No way. Wow. And I would really find it hard pressed that anybody wouldn't think it's your number one. And we'd like to talk to you afterwards, Michael. No, I was kidding. <laughs> um, my favorite song on the album is a song called Mercy Street. Absolutely love Mercy Street. I also love Don't Give Up. I I love I love all the songs. Sledgehammer is probably my least favorite on the album, but a, a song that was the first single or the first radio song when I heard the album come out never gets talked about anymore, and I love it, and it's that voice again. I loved that, that voice again. That should have been a hit. That should have been I a thought hit it was hit. a hit. When I was no, – the summer of 86 it was on the radio all the time, and I was like, God, I love this song. Um, the production is by Daniel Lenoir. Yeah. It's the first one with Daniel Lenoir. He had already had done U2's Unforgettable Fire, and he was really making a name for himself, and I think this just is one of the most brilliantly produced albums of our lifetime. I would put this, if we had to do a top 10 albums of your life, this album appears in my top 10. Oh, yeah. And that is my list. list. You've talked me into putting <laughs> that one up, even though I said no particular order. <laughs> it's that really great. I mean, it is. it's really great. Okay, so Mike, you have some tidbits of information for us now. I do, I do, I do. 1986, the year we graduated. You know, we're in our 35th anniversary year. Isn't yeah, something unbelievable. 35 years. I don't, uh, I don't feel it. Um, some of the number ones, just to give a flavor of what uh, the Billboard Hot 100 had in 1986. Um, say You, Say Me, Lionel Richie mm -hmm. was a number one. These were all number ones from 1986. That's What Friends Are For, Dionne Warwick and Friends. How Will I Know, Whitney Houston. Kyrie, Mr. Mister, loved that song. Sarah, Starship. These Dreams, Heart. And those last two, I think the records came out in 85. Um, that, mm -hmm. uh, that, that heart record was, would, was very high on my list. Rock Me Amadeus, Falco. Kiss, Prince in the Revolution. Uh, Addicted to Love was a number one, Robert Palmer. West End Girls, Pet Shop Boys, who I did like the Pet Shop Boys. Love it. Um, yep. Greatest Love of All was Whitney Houston. Live to Tell, Madonna. On My Own, Patti LaBelle, Michael McDonald. There'll Be Sad Songs, Billy Ocean. These are all number one hits. There were a lot of them in 86. Mm -hmm. uh, Holding Back the Years, Simply Red. I, I enjoy that song. Mm -hmm. Invisible Touch, Genesis, Sledgehammer. Uh, Glory of Love, Peter Cetera. Mm. Papa Don't Preach, Madonna. Higher Love was in number one in 86 with Steve Winwood. Venus, Bananarama. Take My Breath Away, Berlin. I don't know why, but that song, I, I will listen to it if it comes on whatever I'm listening to. Well, that was big in the like Top it. Gun movie. That's why. Yeah. I, you know what, though? I didn't even see Top Gun until probably the early 2000s. Never even saw it. But, yeah, it's crazy. Uh, Stuck With You, Hugh Lewis in the News, um, one of my least favorite off of four. I'm, not, I'm just not into that one. When I Think of You, Janet Jackson. Yep. True Colors, Cindy Lauper. This here is probably one of the um, uh, most um, interesting, not interesting, but uh, curious to me why they would open the record with this song, this record especially, uh, Amanda by Boston, first mm. song off third stage, which was always weird to me that that was the first song. Yeah. <clears throat> Human. It. Yeah, I, it, it's one of my least favorites on there. It is one of my honorable mentions, though, that record. Um, human, the human league, you give love a bad name. The next time I fall, Peter Cetera, Amy Grant, the way it is, Bruce Hornsby in the range, and the last number one song for two weeks in December of 1986 is Walk Like an Egyptian by the Bangles. Wow, there are your 
There are your number one Billboard Hot 100 singles of 1986. Impressive. Damn. I'm surprised One More Night wasn't on that list. Um, I feel like that song was on the radio all the time, and I did not like it. So I just assumed that it had to have been number one, but I guess not. Yeah. No, I, I, who knows? I could look it up. Maybe it went to number two. I agree with you, though. I do remember hearing that song quite a bit. Oh my god! All the time. Yep. Yeah, they uh, th- people had a big Phil Collins fatigue in the uh, in the eighties. Um, right around this time, it started getting a little ridiculous. People saying, "All right, come on." <laughs> not me. I'm a huge Phil Collins fan. Um, not a huge fan of that song in particular, but you know, I wish I'd written it. Okay, so why don't we jump right in with honorable mentions? This will be mm-hmm. albums that really we thought would have been on the list of our top 10 and got edged out. So it's albums that seriously on any given day probably could take the number 10 spot. Maybe. Krell, you want to start with that one? Yeah, sure thing in no particular order. I mean, anyone could have uh, David Lee Roth, eat him and smile. It's like a lot of cover tunes on this album, uh, but, you know, a lot of originals, too. And you know what? I tell you, I, uh, as far as like 5150 and Eat em and Smile, I enjoyed this album better than 5150. Ooh. I thoroughly enjoyed it much better overall. It's like because it's a guitar clinic by Steve Vai. I mean, it's like it's probably Vai's best most coherent playing i mean like yeah he's wanking away and stuff and but i mean it's it's before he got to his whole solo career vibe where everything was just you know blowing his wad all over the place uh i mean the solo in big trouble is awesome uh ladies night in buffalo is an awesome song awesome song too the songs are awesome yankee rose is one of my least favorites on them but i mean it's just a great Great. I mean, even the covers like I'm easy. It's like it, I just enjoyed the hell out of that album and I can just listen to it every damn time. <laughs> Ingve Trilogy, Ingve Malmsteen, Ingve's best album. And I love every song on it and the instrumental on there. I mean, he's guilty through his whole career blowing his wad and stuff like that but the instrumental on there trilogy suite opus number five is is i can listen to it never get bored it is just an intense piece of music uh but you know there, there was the songs themselves i mean like my favorite on there is queens in love yeah me too queens i agree that love. that's his best solo record Yep, and just I strong, agree. strong, and uh, you know, fury and fire, and yeah, and Mark Bowles was singing for him, and and it was a good, strong voice. And I think you know, he got into this whole shuffling the band every album thing. If he had stuck with that lineup with Mark Bowles, and I, I tell you what, I can't remember exactly who the drummer was on, but that's not important. But if he just stuck with that lineup and moved forward with that with that direction, he probably would have been a little more successful. My other honorable mention is album or compact disc or whatever media you have cassette by uh, public image limited, Johnny Lydon. Um, I, I wasn't, I was a casual sex pistols fan. I knew, you know, a few songs from them. I knew who Johnny Lydon was. I had no idea public image limited existed before 1986, tell you the truth, my friend Tom came over, played it, and just a good rocking album with catchy tunes. He managed it with his unique voice. He made a lot of catchy tunes. Some of it can be a little droning sometimes, but I mean, I I I really like that album. And there's a little Italian virtuoso on there named Steve Vai. I'm playing on a few songs, surprisingly enough. Mm-hmm. And I added this one a little late. And uh, after me dissing on 5150, I'm going to put 5150 in there as well. Because what I'll say about the album is, is that 
I didn't, when you were talking about it and you were talking about that first single coming out, I was like, PU, you know, it's like, why can't this be love? To this day, I'm PU. <laughs> I just don't like that song at all. And, but I, I think the strongest song on there is Summer Nights. I like Summer Nights. Uh, Best of Both Worlds, I like. Um, you know, things like From the Inside uh, or From the Outside. I, I can't remember that yeah. song, From the Inside. And I agree, Get Up is a little ham fisted and stuff. But yeah, it's, it, but I mean, the hit, I mean, they were well written songs. I mean, Dreams and uh, Love Walks In. I mean, th those are great hit songs, well written songs. But you compare it against Sammy Hagar's solo career and uh, the hits that he had before then, I, I would say that they don't really measure up to my favorites of Sammy Hagar's solo career. Yeah, the problem with Sammy's solo career, though, is the hits are good. The rest of the songs on the album are awful. Yeah, yeah exactly. Just awful. But Schlock. when he wrote a good song, when he wrote a good yeah. song. When he was good, he's great. When he's not great, it's garbage. Remember the Heroes. Great always. song. And those are my honorable men. I'll do mine now because you have the most, I think, Mike. I have 10. Yeah, <laughs> so I'll do my honorable mentions. And this one just got nudged out just at the last second. Iron Maiden Somewhere in Time. Always love the record. It got nudged out. It, it just isn't as solid as an album as my number 10, so I had to move it. But it's still a brilliant record, really brilliant. Also behind that was Journey Raised on Radio. I love the album, but did I love it more than these other albums? No. After that, I had Depeche Mode, Black Celebration, another record that I love. To me, it's the first brilliant Depeche Mode album. After that, I had Eric Clapton, August. Oh, yeah. This album I absolutely loved. Every song on it was great. It, it's just right in the height of what I consider to be the best part of his career, which was 85 to 89, in my opinion. And I love the record. Produced Another by... album uh, produced by Phil Collins. Phil Collins. Mm -hmm. Another album that I absolutely loved in the summer of 86 was an album called Graceland by Paul Simon. Yeah, hard to overlook this album. Diamonds on the Soles of Her Shoes and everything else you can call me out. I just love it. Great record. It, it, it got nudged out because these other albums I hold more dear, but it was a great record. All right, honorable mentions for me. I have uh, I have ten of them, so I'll just blast through. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe highlight a couple things uh, from some of them. Um, no particular order. Walk about the fix it probably has one of my favorite fix tunes on it. Secret separation, fantastic song. Fantastic. Yep. Uh, another honorable mention: Mechanical Resonance, Tesla. I also love mm -hmm. um, love that record. Um, well, I mean, you mentioned all the songs uh, earlier. Uh, another one, Power by Kansas. This is not one of their better records. It's the first one where uh, Steve Walsh comes back to the band. Yeah. Um, it's, it, it, it was a, a big record for me then. And I probably should say this. There are a couple of records in this honorable mentions list that I I'm, wouldn't even listen to today. I'll tell you what those are. But thinking back to 1986... These were what I loved, right? Uh, those first three, I'd listen to them today. This one as well, Madonna, True Blue. I love that album. Um, it, it's, I must have six or seven hits on it, I, I, I think, but uh, a fantastic record. Um, also, <laughs> Madonna to Somewhere in Time. Um, I think I disagree with you a little, Krell. My favorite song on that mm. is Wasted Years, um, yeah. but great record. Uh, third stage Boston again aside from the fact that they open this with Amanda which is not um, even a song I really care about at all but to open the record with that was a little curious to me um, but I love can't you say on that oh, just love it um, 
Here's one that I, I'm sure that uh, both of you will not be familiar with, but it's called Three Hearts and the Happy Ending Machine. It's a Daryl Hall solo record. Uh, it had one big hit on it uh, called Dream Time, which is, is probably very dated if you listen to it now. Um, uh, the keyboard sounds and it is clearly 80s, uh, but, uh, but I love it. I love Daryl Hall, love his voice. Uh, Toto Fahrenheit. I love this record and I'm, I'm starting to think that maybe I could have knocked something out of the top 10 and put that in there. Uh, but you did Dave. So I'll, I'll leave it there. Um, here's the next two. I can't really listen to very much anymore. Um, Cinderella night songs. I loved when it came out in 86. Uh, it's, Same, yeah. it's just okay to me now. And my last honorable mention is a record that I absolutely cannot listen to now. Uh, the production um, is is very dated and very 80s, uh, but it's Slippery When Wet, Bon Jovi. There are songs on that. There are songs on that record that um, I, 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 if I listen to it today, let's take away, you know, Living on a Prayer and whatever. I've, everybody's heard those songs so much that I'm, I, I, I just, I don't want to anymore. But even some of the ones that weren't hits are just not great now. It stuns me that that was that that stayed in my CD player so long back then. But, you know, Bon Jovi was a big thing. I remember seeing them three nights in a row on that tour once. But it had to be 1987 because this record didn't do well when it came out. Uh, it didn't. It, I think it, it maybe went gold. And then um, once Living on a Prayer came out, that was after You Give Love a Bad Name uh, had run its course. Living on a Prayer uh, revived this record. That summer, I saw them open for 38 Special, and I thought, oh, you know what? I, I, I got I to revisit 7800 Fahrenheit. I like this band. This is cool. The new tunes sound cool. And then later in that summer, I went um, and saw them three nights in a row at Great Woods, now headlining, based on Living on a Prayer. Living With on Cinderella a Prayer did that opening. Them. With Cinderella uh, nope. opening. Right? Keel opened. Oh, Keel. Yep. Keel. Yeah, and that was another record that I that I liked at the time. That sounds ridiculously '80s now. Keel, it's a, I said the right thing to the wrong girl, or the wrong thing to the right girl. I don't know what the hell the song is, but oh my god, is it's is it's that that '80s production that I I just it's not good for my ears now. So, so was, yeah, in '86, I was getting away from metal. So like Cinderella, I would never listen to that. I was listening to Maiden and Queensrÿche and. I just thought like a lot of the hair band stuff like Cinderella was garbage. And I remember people telling me, oh, Tom Kiefer so talented. I'm like, then why do I hate him? Because I hate every song I've ever heard from them. Mm -hmm. And then it sealed it for me when I saw them open up for David Lee Roth at the show we went to. All right, folks, that is the list. I will now post our list at the end here so you can see it one last time. Thank you for watching. In the comments, we would like to see what your top 10 would be from the year 1986. Now, we're talking about albums that were released in the year 1986. Put your top 10 in there. We'd love to see how you guys stack up. Um, so far in all the list shows, people are putting really interesting stuff in there. So I'd like to see what it is. I want to thank Krellbach for coming on today. Mike Flanagan, thanks for coming on today. And thanks, everybody, for watching. Very good. <laughs>